darkness won't allow it. So you will walk into the lair of the beast. Look it in the eye, and you will go to war. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild.
Oh, Senor. Your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help, even if it displeases him. Oh, Senua. Your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help, even if it displeases him. Hela possesses large dwelling places in Helheim. Tall are her walls, high are her gates. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize, half black and half the color of flesh, and her face menacing and grim. Warrior, you're a disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Get up. Get up. Get up and fight. Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. 
They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts, and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through our eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Curse. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's cursed. Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there is no one left to do that for you. Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your soul. Do it. Come on. There. Why go on? When you give everything and face that which torments you. Only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined. Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory. A feeling. A song. met him. She was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbel, made sure of that. 
only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs, errands out in the Orkney plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren and lonely. Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out of Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. She begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up.
world as he so effortlessly caught the world in bliss. If only she could do the same. See the world through eyes anew. And dance with it, just like he does. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not. I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I, I watched you and... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, and don't tell them. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! Believe it. Is he's he not real. Is he there? You're alone in these mountains. Is that Delia? Nothing lives here. You so won't survive. <laughs> you met him by the tree. She met him by the tree. Maybe it's a sign, the tree. What's he trying to tell you? He's waiting for you by the tree. As the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. Sigmund's sister trades shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time,
Imagine a sword that can slay gods. Its name is Gramra. It was forged by the god of all Northmen, Odin, and gifted to Sigmund, a great warrior. I need this sword. It's important. Can you help me? The sword appears whole, but it is an illusion. It shattered into shards long ago. It is said a great warrior can reforge grammar by answering the trials of Odin, one for each shard. The roots of the Tree of Death will take you to new lands where you will face the trials. Go to the shard. Go to the shard. Go to the shard. Go to the shard. Find it. Find it. There it is. Focus. There's the shard. Focus. Focus. Use your eyes. Look. Get closer. A king in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. Like when we first met, remember? I'll find him. What was that? Huh? Did you hear that? Nothing. What was that voices? It's not his voice. Other voices are dead. Not Dillian. Dillian's calling to you. Can Where you hear him? Where is he? Huh? He sounds like Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver the daughter of a berserker, born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrvi. I can hear him. Herver disguises herself as a man, to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father, after passing through these ghostly fires, as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. And where can you go? You're failing. Find a think. 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 Focus. Use your own. It's not here. It's not here. We told you.
What's happening? It's not here. Quiet. He wants me to find him. I'm lost without him. That's not here. That doesn't sound like Delia. It sounds like something more dangerous. Something is here. Within the burial mound, Herver calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave mounds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, it sure reminds me of you. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. 
in my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? The chief and son. No. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said it could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come, send my hand. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. You want to see what the mask sees? No, she doesn't. Where are we? What is this? It's the same. It's another world. It's lighter. It's nicer. The bridge. It's not broken. It's fixed. What happened? The bridge is fixed. Let's cross it. You can feel me. You can feel me. You need the runes to fight Dillian. You need Dillian. He's waiting for you. He always said he would. He. Open the gate. She can't. Open the gate. It's locked. Try harder. She can't. The gate. She can't. <laughs> she can't. She will. She'll find a way. She will. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. 
So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts. Dillian, there he is. There he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go through. Where is he? Where is he gone? We're in the wrong world. He's not here. She's in the wrong world. He's not in this world. He's in the other one. He's in the other one. He's in the dark world. The dark. The dark world. The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senna explored new paths into the unknown. believed in you. He was
was the only one that didn't mind the girl. He loved her so much. Do you remember meeting him beneath the tree? Senwa, you've got to saw that she was strong. You can't go up you there. You can't go up there. Not in this world. Dillian. He didn't know who was coming. There he is. Where are you taking He's up there. He's up there. How do you get up there? There's a way. There is a way up there. The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess. Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go. And she was caught between two worlds. That of Sinbel and her past. And Dillian. A future. Two realities tearing at her soul. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. 
We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur. Weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. You are guilty. Was it worth it? The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. You're wasting time. You're cursed. You'll never succeed. Slow, slow, quicker. He led you astray. To your father when you had the chance. His love has tortured you, and it tortures them. He was the only one that didn't mind the curse. He loved her. dimly upon the druids, like her father, Zinbel. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see, and he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, had to see the world through his eyes. Slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. 
No one can. My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. The word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? But you give up the beautiful world thing. You, and only you, can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? A gift that makes you so special in my eyes. Just another part of the person I know. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? What if this has nothing to do with the sword? What if we're wrong? The sword will never be yours. <laughs> what if this is the end? It's just a trick. It's just a pointless test. You've been fooled before. You could be fooled again. I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? This place feels... It's... Creepy. Creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? There Where he is. There Did he is. is. The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. He's Find going it. in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. The air is gone. Keep going. How do you find it? It's just a trap. It's just a test. It's a test. Like the old warrior trials. Delia will help me. The stench of rot. She can almost taste it. Do you smell it? No. Don't worry. Not everyone can. It was a warm spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. No one else could. She knew something was wrong, something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. The bridge. It's broken. Fix it. You have to fix it. How many of you have to find him? Quick, get to the house. Get to the house and finish this trial. It doesn't finish until you get into the house. Before he disappears, Senua. You have to get in. Fixed. 
need it. Sanu, what happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. That doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Without 
Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking you from the inside. You're disappearing one memory at a time. Every time you remember, it disappears. They're going to take everything. They're not yours anymore. They're going to take everything you have. The memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill your soul. They want to crush it. Body, they want your soul. They want your mind, and they're going to take it. The memories were yours, but they're the gods now. Nothing is yours anymore. It's disappearing with your memories. Say that their all father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness, there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. They've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet. So dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Feel it rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I think I'm somewhere else now. But the breeze has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. I've reached the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left this all behind. 
I'll be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of you. It won't let me go. Shenna. My father. He taught me that the hardest battles are fought in the mind, not the soul. I'm no coward. He proved that to me in the warrior trials. This is just another battle. You can beat it. This isn't for that. You don't have to help me. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. You need people like you. Okay. I'll do my best. Not following me. Leave it behind and keep moving forwards.
think I'm in a house. It stinks. Of death. The darkness is testing you. But you are in control. As well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. Tell you. Help me. She could spend hours, days even, trapped within herself, in the dark. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were... gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. Forged, you will have Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillian was helping me. And the sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. the strength to pass the warrior trials and she saw a way out to leave her past behind and become a warrior in Dillian's clan. The sword is tainted by the gods of darkness. Leave it. No. He left it here. He wants me to take it. You will pay a price for this. Years later, 
With Zinbel's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Tell you. Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us. <laughs> you have blood on your hands. They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get you. Hold it, hold the heavy strike. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Unleash the sword. She can't remember. She can't focus. The mirror, the mirror. Her focus is coming back. He's down. Finish it. Finish it. Strike him. You won. You're so Focus. Focus. The corpse waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them. The ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with disturbed mind. Do you hear the suffering, Senua? Does your precious gift of sight let you see the souls that rot here in this sea of corpses? Do you feel the blood running cold on your skin? Do you hear their endless cries? Do you smell their putrid wounds? They were once brothers, sisters, and loved ones. And look at what you have done to them. All because you were a coward, because you ran from your curse instead of facing it. When you turned your back on your father, Zinbel, you turned your back on the gods and let the darkness wreak havoc on your people. Why must they pay for your heresy?
their blood. gave up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother to go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her Senua look at me do you hear that Calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Simba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimbal is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senua? In us? Come back to me. Please. Don't let this darkness come between us. battles are fought in the mind. He gave her the sword with which to fight in more ways than one. And she gave him her word, never to surrender. 
All she needed was a little help. A little hope. 